Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. Please take a moment to silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father John McCarthy, and our gathering hymn is in Celebrate in Song, number 6.40, Faith and Truth and Life Bestowing, number 6.40. Faith and truth and life bestowing, open now the scriptures, Lord. See to life eternal sowing, scattered on the wind abroad. Let not hearts open receiving, like a barren field be found, choked with thorns. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, my name is John McCarthy. I'm a, a Jesuit priest. Uh, I'm originally from St. John's here, in St. John's, Newfoundland, but I live in Sudbury, Northern Ontario. We're a community of nine, nine Jesuits, uh, working mostly among Indigenous peoples, of uh, Lake Superior and Lake Huron in Northern Ontario. So our community of nine were dispersed Thunder Bay, Manitoulin Island, and uh, Sudbury. So I'm home for a, a visit with my family. And uh, Father Cease asked if I would uh, celebrate Mass for a couple of times here today. So this is my first parish, actually. I grew up on Mary Meeting Road, just down the way. So. Uh, St. Patrick's School is my first school. I understand St. Pat's doesn't exist anymore. And so, uh, so here I am many years later. And so we give thanks this morning to my friends. We give thanks for the beauty and the truth and the mercy of God in our lives. And we come on a Saturday morning, 9 a.m. on a Saturday, to, give, uh, to acknowledge the great beauty of God in our lives. So let us now ask God to bless us and to care for us each and every moment of our days. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Father to intercede for 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May God take away our sin, all of our fear, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us now pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. After Jeremiah had spoken all that the Lord had commanded, the officials of Judea came from the king's house and took their seat at the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, this man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city as you have heard with your own ears. When Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people saying, this is the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey, the, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will change his mind about the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, here I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, this man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. But the hand of Ahikam son of Shephan was with Jeremiah, so that he was not given over into the hands of the people to be put to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 69 is, Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. of your 
your steadfast love answer me with your steadfast help rescue me lord in your steadfast love answer the oppressed see it and be glad you who seek God let your hearts revive for the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in minds Lord in steadfast love answer me reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias his brother Philip's wife, because John had been telling him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised an on oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl who brought it to her mother. Her disi his disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This man deserves a sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, against Jeremiah. And Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him into prison, and he decided to put him to death because of what he said about Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. Our readings today are full of uh, death and violence, murder, 
because of the inability of people to accept truth in their lives in many ways. And what does it mean, we could probably ask ourselves this morning, uh, what does it mean to live in truth? To be men and women of faith and of hope and love, but also of truth. It's quite amazing uh, when you really look at these first reading and at the gospel, how people who proclaim truth, Jeremiah, the prophet of God, and what was the response to Jeremiah? He must be put to death. John the Baptist proclaimed the truth about Herod's life, that he could not take Herodias as his wife. He could not become an adulterer. And what was the response of Herod? Put him to death. And so it's quite interesting that in the response to uh, truth, the word of God, the only response given by the people of Israel, the Judah, and by Herod is to put the truth to death. It's amazing when you think of it, what is it about truth and goodness that demands a response of death and of violence? And we see it in our own world today in many, many places, men and women and children, who simply by professing the truth of their faith are put to death or are suppressed or oppressed. And so maybe we could ask ourselves as well, what does it mean to live the truth in our own lives? You know, there's a, there's a call of God in each of our hearts, an imprint of God that calls us to faith and hope and love and beauty and goodness, that calls us to who we are, who we are meant to be. And maybe I would uh, profess that that is the truth of who we are and how to live it, how to recognize it, and how to accept it. Because any other, any other life that we live, in a way, leads to death. It leads to violence. We do violence to ourselves by never accepting who we are, by never accepting how God calls us to hope and faith and love. And I suppose we could say as well, you know, to live lives that are truthful, that are truth-filled. And often we kind of, uh, I know myself, you know, like sometimes I don't want to, you know, a situation is at hand in the family or in the world or in myself, and often I don't want to acknowledge it or recognize it. I don't want to recognize the actual truth of what is happening. So I don't say much about it or I, you know, I live as if it doesn't happen or I wish it could be otherwise, but I don't do anything about it. And in that way, I can never live the fullness of truth. But if, like Jeremiah, and if, like John the Baptist, I accept what is true, and I name what is true, regardless of the consequences, because I think if we live life in a way in which we acknowledge what is true, it be life becomes an adventure. We just don't know what's going to happen. It may lead to the cross, with the case of Jeremiah, although he was saved at the end. John the Baptist was put to death. And Jesus, who acknowledged the truth of the world, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus says. And because of that, he was put to death. And so it's an amazing question, I think, that the gospel and the first reading posed to us this morning. Why is truth always, in many ways, uh, rejected. Why do people want to kill the truth? And maybe we could ask ourselves, why do we want to kill the truth of who we are, of who our family is, of what the world is like? And we fail to accept the truth of who we are, and maybe we live lives that are desperate and never really fully satisfied because we don't accept the goodness and the truth of who we are, and to live in that way. So the gospel today, my friends, and the first reading pose us a question that's come down through the centuries. 
What is truth? And uh, in a world today when we hear so much about artificial intelligence and the way in which the internet can be used in ways that profess falsehood or we don't know what's true anymore, what's real, you know, that kind of thing. And so the question is even much more profound and much deeper for us as well today. And so let us pray, my friends, that uh, during this Eucharist, during our lives, that we may be instilled with the truth of who we are and to rejoice in that and to live our lives in a way that promote that truth, the truth of faith and hope and goodness. And in the end, the truth that sets us free. So may that be our prayer and may, may that be our hope during this Eucharist. And so let us now stand and let us profess our, our prayers. Whenever we come together as one body in Christ, we come with many needs and hopes and desires. So let us pray, uh, first of all, for uh, those for whom this Mass has been offered, for Leo Dillon and his deceased uh, family members, for Sarah Fitzpatrick, and for Peter Dunn, that they continue to rest in the goodness and the right hand of God. For this grace, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for our own lives as well, the lives of our families, our husbands, our wives, our children, our loved ones. Pray that we will live in truth, the truth of who we are, the truth uh, to which God calls all of us. For this, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for our bishop, uh, for Pray for all priests, all deacons, uh, religious men and women, all those who serve the word of God, that God will give them hearts of courage and minds that are free. For this, we pray to the Lord. And I'd like to pray as well for the beauty and the goodness of, the crea of creation, the beauty and goodness of uh, the world that God has made for us. So in goodness and thanksgiving for the world, for the world of nature and creation, we pray to the Lord. And at this time now, for your own prayers, please, for the countless prayers that lie deep within your hearts. For all of these prayers, known often only to God, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you have heard our prayers, the prayers of our lips, and the countless prayers in the depths of our hearts. We ask you now to grant all of them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. So my friends, our gifts of bread and wine are now prepared. Let us pray that they will become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here. 
that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us all give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. And may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, all the ministers of your word. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So now as one body in Christ and rooted in that one faith, let us pray the words that Jesus has given us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. At this point in our Eucharist, we always pray for peace. The first words of the risen Christ were always, peace be with you. And so we pray for peace among nations in so many troubled, violent parts of the world. We pray for peace among languages and creeds, peace in our families, and probably most important and can be often most difficult is peace in our own hearts. So let us now pray for that peace that we believe that only the risen Christ can give. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look not on our wars, look not on what divides us, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. And we offer each other a sign of that peace. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be yours. And may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Our communion hymn can be found in Celebrate in Song, number 6.4, Let Us Be Bread, number 6.4. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shed, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be And let us now continue our prayer. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ, our Lord. 
just like to wish you a blessed Saturday, and uh, may God keep you always in his truth. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you throughout this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our friends, our Mass is ended. Let us now go in the glory of God to share the love and the mercy of God with all whom we meet. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Our missioning hymn is in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 517, Lord Jesus, We Must Know You, number 517. Jesus, we must know. 